So, this is where I train. My name is Sean Hills. We're here today in my shipping container, which I've named the Haunt House. You can't get further north than Wales. Out in the middle of nowhere. We're about 10 minutes from the top of the island here. Animals and that are the neighbours. We're about two weeks old. Obviously I knew that she was a female and the other one was a male. But you know, I wasn't really expecting it. So just one morning I came in here and she'd made a nest out of sawdust. I thought they were rats at first, because like when they're first born they're just like completely pink. So I was like, what the fuck are these? Winter was the worst. All the animals, they don't want to come in here to keep warm. And obviously like all their little muddy feet and as dirty as it is, I do like a, a clean carpet in my gym. Lewis. Ah. Get man. Country thing to do, isn't it? Grow your own food. Yeah, this is like a pre-training ritual for me these days. Just sit here, eating tomatoes. Oh shit! These are uh, Carolina Reapers. Will's hottest chili. I've I've not yet tried them now. It's like the extreme of everything, isn't it? My brother put some in my dad's shower gel, and uh, he literally he was he was sat downstairs and he was completely pink, like like purple blotches in his face. And I'm like, Fucking hell, dad! Like, what's happened to you? And he's like, your brother. He's put chilli in my shower gel. No tomato? Have you ever tried this before? Probably since I was about 16. Before then, you know, anything weights I did was purely to help with my rugby. But then, you know, as soon as I went away to college and I had like free reign over my own training, I just I fucking loved lifting weights. Like we always used to play on a Saturday in college. And I'd find myself like not playing as hard on the Saturday because I was like, oh, you know, don't wanna, don't wanna tie myself out because Got to be fresh to squat tomorrow. But then when I went away to uni, I ended up getting a lot of quad tears. But yeah. them mats like literally when I deadlift even now like when I deadlift heavy like you know the whole place so all I have in here is squat rack the roger higher bar a safety squat bar and all that pull down machine it's it's all you need really it definitely does make a difference having comp spec stuff So on the door over there I've got pull-ups and a question mark written on the door just so before I even think about leaving the gym I remember to do my pull-ups because uh, they are important I do like doing them. I definitely had a bit of a, a switch in, I wouldn't say mentality but you know my approach to training. Because before, they would literally come to the gym every day, like just absolutely boiling over. Um, but then you get to a point where you realise that isn't really sustainable. You get mentally burnt out. 
you just can't do it. So I try and reserve it for my top set. So you know, I find with sumo I can't get angry with sumo because once I get kind of worked up, technique just goes out the window, which is why I, uh, I prefer, <laughs> prefer conventional. me the whole battle of the 93s thing look like, it's a battle you're not going to fight anyone it's like okay yeah it's competition but you know at the end of the day it's it's lifting weights I'm not afraid at all like you know I compete in powerlifting because I love competing Deadlift jack when you got your mum's sandal. See, imagine if you'd spent look fifty quid on a deadlift jack. So I think the key to longevity in the sport is in <laughs> my brother's shooting the container with an air rifle. <laughs> <laughs> I think the key to longevity in the sport is enjoying it because you know if you don't love what you do then ultimately like you know when motivation runs out and you know then you're gonna fall off the wagon. For me 300 was a number I've chased like ever since I started squatting. So then when I finally did it because you know for years I was like this is the comp where I squat 300, I'd tear my groin, I'd tear my quad or something would happen and 300 was off the cards so when it, when it finally happened it was just like you don't know you don't even know how to explain it it's just yeah that's the first time i attempted 300 i've like doubled 290 and stuff like that in training like that cycle, you know, when you've got a feeling in your bones, like it's, it's this cycle. Well, you know, everything was going perfect. Like you know, hit PBs every session. So the peak went, you know, like 270 for three, 280 for three, 291. I did 291 because it was like the current British record, and it's something I failed. Like that was the last heavyweight I failed. So it was like just for the sake of like a mental victory, I put 291 on the bar and doubled it. So after I did that, I was just like, I remember, because it was like just after I'd started seeing that, and uh, I squatted 280 for a triple, and I knew I had more in the tank, and then I just like started crying in the gym, and she was just like, what's wrong, like, why are you crying, that was good, wasn't it? I was just like, yeah, I know, but you know, this is the comp where I squat 300. The bass was like, fucking hell, he's mental. To me, powerlifting has always been a hobby. To me, like, yes, okay, it is a sport, but, you know, in, in my mind, I don't really see it as a sport because it's a hobby, like, you know, like I enjoy fishing, you know. Um, you know, I enjoy powerlifting and, you know, that's what's kept me coming back after 
double figure amounts of quad tears, groin tears, pec tears and all that kind of thing and you know I can come down my garden into my container that makes me happy knowing that at the end of every day I can come home and sit in my gym with a cup of black coffee and listen to my death metal and no one else can, can interfere.